my name is Adam Murray and welcome to Extra Time. Today, Ryan and I are joined by a real Limerick legend to get the view on Shannon's side. As well as being a former Limerick hurling captain, he represented Limerick from 1997 to 2009 and was named centre forward on the 2007 All-Stars team. Welcome to the show, Ali Moore. Thanks, Adam. How are you, Ryan? Hi. Right. And... Uh, um. What's, what's the feeling in Limerick uh, this week or the atmosphere ahead of Sunday? Uh, I suppose, look, it's it's maybe a little bit subdued uh, at the moment insofar as there, you know, obviously there's talk of the match and it's not like, you know, in the more than Waterford, we're not in the Ireland finals every day of the week. But um, I suppose, yeah, it's just, it's like everything, I suppose, just the word of the year. It's just strange, really. Um uh, you, you know, obviously the last couple of weeks have been great because, you know, in the more than Waterford, there's, there's, you know, people looking forward to matches on the weekend, but the fact that you're not going to matches and there's not the same amount of people and not the not the same razzmatazz as would normally go with it, as I said, it is that little bit uh, surreal, but um, definitely now you'd notice maybe in the last, certainly the last day or two in Limerick, I've just noticed that a lot more flags, like that's, I suppose, the only visible sign because you're not interacting with people as much. That that seems to be the uh, the only real sign that, that there is a lot more maybe, um, a lot more feeling out there about the... Uh, about the match on Sunday, so so that's kind of look. I'd imagine it's probably no different in Waterford, just given the current restrictions. I think ordinarily Limerick and Waterford probably have, uh, in my opinion, two of the best sets of supporters anywhere in the country in any code. And you know, we'd be kind of we'd be overcome with excitement to be in an Ireland final. And no, look, Waterford were there in two thousand and seventeen, probably didn't go their way. We were there uh, in in two thousand and eighteen, and and finally got over the line and. You know the 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 outpouring of, of emotion after that was was huge. So look, I think everyone knows now that that's not going to be the case this weekend. We're talking about um, you know if if whoever wins the cup, uh, that you know the cup was left in 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 Dublin. You know which which uh, I suppose I suppose uh, dampens the whole thing. Like so, look, it is what it is. You just make the most of it. But I'm sure from now until the weekend, there'll be there'll be a lot more maybe on the radio and and and. Um, even around visibly, I think there'll be a lot more hype as well, I'd imagine. And uh, when you played in Northern Ireland in 2007, Kilkenny were um, hot favourites. And back in 2018, you could nearly say Gal or Limerick were the underdogs against Galway as well. But um, this weekend now, you'd nearly rate them as the favourites. So do you think that will suit them more? Um, yeah, come here. Look, they are, and, and there's no point in in saying otherwise. And I think, to be fair to Limerick, you, you know, they've probably been favourites from from the outset, even given their early league form. I think, uh, I think you know, they were laying their stall out good and early that, that um, you know, they were gunning for an All-Ireland. Maybe in Limerick, we felt that they'd left one after them last year. So, look, they're definitely out to make amends this year. So, look, yeah, there's no point in saying otherwise. Um, Limerick are, are favourites and justifiably so and that, that's not in any way being, being arrogant like but I suppose even the most ardent of, of, of Waterford fans will accept that probably Limerick are going to be favourites Look, but at the end of the day favourites is only a tag like it, it it means nothing as we saw all over you know football especially this year the amount of favourites that, that have been dumped out like and, and, and look Limerick are in no position to take any opposition for granted, let alone this Waterford team. So, so yeah, look, they're 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 justifiably favourites. But, like to be honest, I always felt even playing that favourites was a tag that that the media made up and that public uh, make up. Like within the Waterford camp and within the Limerick camp, uh, you know, they're not going to be talking themselves up to the point where we just need to show up and and win. Like you know, they know it's going to be a battle royale on Sunday. So, um, so I'd say now that'll be gone out the gap after after about thirty seconds, and even you know going back to the Munster final this year, Limerick would have been hot favourites going in. I'll be a Cork or a Waterford had a great performance against Cork, but um, but again, you know, Waterford uh, showed absolutely no regard for that that favouritism tag, and and we're very unlucky probably not to come out and win the Munster final. And um, going back. Uh, Limerick won three hundred twenty one titles from two thousand up to two thousand two, but uh, they never brought it on to win a senior. But uh, this Limerick team also won two hundred twenty ones. Uh, where do you think they maybe 
uh, took advantage of their wins where other Limerick teams maybe haven't. Jeez, you're really delving into the archives there, Adam. Uh, I'll tell you what, fair, we probably weren't even born in, in, in 2000 and no, 2000, 2001 and two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, look, I suppose there'll be books written on, on, on what happened to those teams in Limerick in, in, uh, in the early noughties. And unfortunately, look, I suppose could have been a combination of things. They were just a very successful group that kind of came out of nowhere um, and uh, and actually not too dissimilar from this Limerick group. You know, there was a five-year plan in place in Limerick maybe in the late 90s and, and that really good group spawned out of that um, that that five-year plan uh, for, for hurling development that, uh, that went on in Limerick. So, so I suppose, look, it was just a combination of factors. Maybe too many of them came onto the senior setup maybe too soon. Um, you can argue maybe that they were coming into a Limerick team that wasn't particularly successful. Um, look, everyone has their own theories. The bottom line is, you know, they just didn't kick on, like obviously with the exception of, of maybe 2007 when we got to the All-Ireland final. But like we've been there, thereabouts, like, you know what I mean? While, while history mightn't reflect too kindly, you know, all those teams were always competitive as well. So I suppose, look, difference yeah when Limerick came along in 2015 again I'd say that was completely against the against the um, against the grain at the time no one expected Limerick to win even to get out of Munster in 2015 they subsequently got out of Munster and won the All-Ireland and then won again as you alluded to in in 2017 like so so I suppose the difference is maybe a lot of these guys have also come through very successful um academies but I'd also say for me the big factor with a lot of those Limerick teams is they came through um, Art School Reach they came through you know playing Harty Cup and it's something you know I'm sure you'll, you'll, uh, you'll acknowledge in your own school that you know the importance of of, of good secondary schools and, and, and hurling at a high level in secondary schools and Limerick definitely you know a lot of the top players the Declan Hannans the Shane Dowlings the Keane Lynch's um, you know Casey Brothers they all came through that that as well like so I think that's been very very important so by the time they'd won their under 21 they were well used to to winning um and you know obviously they were they were very well guided too you know they they came into a structure whereby I suppose Limerick people were acutely aware of what had happened maybe in the early noughties and they were definitely a lot more protected I would say than than, uh, than maybe the group 20 odd years ago but um but yeah look that was just an exceptionally good group it, again in Limerick you, you know to make comparisons with Waterford, Waterford have had really good success at at minor and, and under twenty one uh, in the last maybe five or six years as well. Like you know what I mean. So like there is there is a a, a common trend there, but it is very difficult to transition over from from under twenty one to senior. Like you know it's a big it's a big step up. Like I suppose under twenty one seems to be a little bit more freer and and uh, less restrictive, whereas senior hurling at inter county level is 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 full on from the from the day you step inside that level. And um, while well, Limerick, Limerick have great skills and hurlers, but at the same time they've massive men like Hegarty and Kyle Hayes. Do you think that their phys the physical aspect of their game helped them in the last few years? Ah, look, look no doubt, no doubt. Um, and again, look, I, I suppose you know I'm, I'm not putting it down to look like, and it's not like Limerick have have, have went out of their way to uh, maybe earmark getting big players um but, but like I, I just think these guys have a combination of both skill fitness but as you said huge size yeah. as well like they're giants I mean and even even to meet these guys on the street like you know you'd probably say uh, obviously they're you know they're 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 tall a lot of them you know Gerard Hegarty 6'6 six, six, you know Dermot Burns 6'4 Kyle Hayes 6'5 like they're all like when you think about it they're like a basketball team like you know what I mean they're absolutely huge all together but when you see him tugged out, it's just their physique. Like, you know, from my own club, Tom Morrissey and, and Dan Morrissey, like, you know, they're nearly like pin-up boys. But again, to see him in their in their threads, normally you'd say, you know, nothing not, uh, nothing special, but you see him tugged out, they're just giants and men. Like, and that's, I suppose, look, they've had the benefit of maybe they're in year four now of, of that cycle of training. Like, they had a guy called Joe O'Connor when he came in first in 2017. Like, and Limerick would have been so far off the mark maybe... Uh, in 2017 relative to where they are now like so so they have brought that physical power element that um you know look there's no point in saying otherwise it's a huge advantage you know with the exception maybe of the Galway team that they played last weekend they probably won't meet a team as physically big um 
as as what they are you know what i mean and especially in these conditions too people said maybe will these conditions uh, are they an advantage or a disadvantage um you know will the more skillful hurler profit or the bigger hurler uh, but i think you know in limerick's case they can they can do both um so like yeah look i think that's going to be a huge advantage uh, you know yourself you know when they take ball into contact or when they go into contact not nine times out of ten they're coming out with with the ball um, and they can power through tackles and that's a huge huge advantage in the in the current game but look again to look at it from a waterfall perspective okay while they mightn't have that same element of physique right now um you know what i mean they they you know they still have a lot of big strong men but uh, they're compensating with an absolutely massive work rate and aggression and, um, you know, very, very difficult to, to break them down. Again, as, as, as Limerick found out in the Munster final, like, you know what I mean, they're going to be every bit as physical. And, and even against Kilkenny, who are probably a bigger physical team than Waterford, like, I think for, for the most part, they bullied them in the All-Ireland semi-final as well. Like, so so from that point of view, I think Waterford will look to try and negate that that, that Limerick height advantage. And they're certainly not going to be lumping high ball into the Limerick half-back line um, uh, on, on Sunday anyway, you know. And uh, do you think there, what weaknesses uh, do you think Limerick could look to exploit? Or do you think uh, there are any areas of the field where Limerick would be worried about? So, yeah, maybe, okay, what, what areas will Limerick look to exploit? Um, like, I don't think, you know, I think Limerick and Waterford, it'll be their third time playing this year. So they probably know a fair bit about one another. Um, look, I think all games now, it's not so much target and a weakness like I don't think the the Waterford team have major weaknesses as such I, I would probably feel that look they got off to a poor start against against uh, Kilkenny like they're not going to get away with that against Limerick I feel uh, you know they're going to have to peg back um, uh, you know um, I suppose if they were to try and peg back that that lead, like you know, I think at one point against Kilkenny was it would maybe eight or nine points or whatever, like you no, know, it was a huge, a huge differential. They're not going to get away with that. So, so, so certainly, I think Limerick are going to look to maybe get ahead early. Like Limerick haven't started particularly well in their last two games against Watford, the Munster final, and against Galway. So I think maybe Limerick will try and use that negative and turn it into an advantage against um, against Watford. And I think put real pressure on him. Because I think Waterford aren't going to get away with kind of you know chasing the game for for 70, 75 minutes against Limerick. So you know to flip it on its head, I think Waterford definitely have, have to get a, a a very very good start as well. They have to get goals, and I think maybe that's okay. People are alluding to the fact that that Limerick haven't been scoring goals right. right. So like that that is a, a worry and a concern in that they're going to have to get goals really to start putting teams away because they're not putting teams away at the moment. You know. So now having said all that. Um, you know, fellas that are far more expert than me in, in terms of analysing hurling, like, like, you know, teams are setting up to stop Limerick from, from scoring goals anyway. Um, and I think even two of our best players uh, for the last number of years, Aaron Galan and Graham Mulcahy, were very subdued maybe in the in the Galway game, especially because they were just completely crowded out and that supply of ball that they're used to getting didn't come in. Like So I think from a Limerick point of view, um, I think maybe there will be more opportunities. I, th I think Waterford are, pr are probably going to go to negate our half forward line because that's that's something they did to very good effect in the Munster final. They looked to stop Groot Hegarty Roman, you know Tom Morrissey, who was brilliant against Galway, was taken off against um, Waterford again because they were just choked. So that that to me will be the more interesting side of it tactically is that okay if Waterford go toe to toe with um, if they go toe to toe with the Limerick half forward line, does that then maybe make them slightly more vulnerable in their in their full back line as well and uh, yeah look I, I think again if they if they can maybe get on top our, our half back line have been the unsung heroes this year I think they've been excellent particularly Dermot Burns um, and Kyle Hayes also I think they've been really excellent so like again Waterford are going to want to you know they're going to have to really step up and try and stop those guys like you know if you shut down our half, half forward line I think it's probably allowing our, our half back line maybe a little bit more space and as 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 you know all three of them um are, are very good score takers in their own right like so they won't be afraid to maybe have have pot shots from from outside like so they're kind of they're they're the key jewels maybe from a Waterford point of view um I felt even in the Munster final that 
you know, when they did get in, themselves in a very good position, they probably should have asked more questions of, of Limerick. Now, that was maybe down to maybe a lack of experience, but I think definitely if they get themselves into that position again, like what they did against Kilkenny, they're going to start really driving hard at, at the Limerick backs because, you know, no back likes to be turned, but if they start running hard at you, like, you know, if Stephen Bennett, Bennett and, and Desi Hutchinson and even Austin, who's brilliant the last day, if they start really driving at Limerick, I think, um, I think they're going to ask questions then because, Limerick aren't used to being on the back foot like that, so so they're kind of the, the you know the key areas of the game that that will have a huge bearing on um, on how it turns out. And um, do you think there are any areas in the Limerick team that uh, John Coyley and his management team are worried about? Well, no, like that. Now, I suppose you know as I, as I just said, probably the one concern maybe is that uh, if Waterford do start turning them and if if they can completely block out uh, our, our half forward line first, and if they can kind of break even, even with our half back line, I think then that's maybe creating a platform for, uh, for, for Waterford to exploit. Like, cause you know, there's no point in saying it. Like they do have serious gas inside, like, and, and, you know, they've shown that when they start running their teams, um, they're, they're a major, threat like so look I think yeah John Kyle would be very very aware of that like and you know a lot of people have said maybe our, our full back then because you know other than Sean Finn Dan Morrissey isn't the natural full back and, and Barry Nash isn't the natural um, full back either you know what I mean so so you know if enough pressure is brought to bear on them um, you know you could ask questions from, from that point of view but um, but again like that you know that's a big ask like you know what I mean you're asking to try and negate the Limerick half forward line, uh, break even with their half-back line and hope that ball doesn't go into, you know, the likes of Mulcahy or Peter Casey or or, uh, or Aaron Galan inside, like, you know, so when you have all those things done, now you can maybe look at at, uh, at exploiting uh, any maybe perceived weakness in the full-back line. And um, Paul Canark, who, of course, has trained the team, was with Clare in 2013 and Limerick two years ago. And uh, he's back with Limerick this year, and he obviously kind of has a very good feel for the game. But uh, how do you think he impacts their style of play? Ah, hugely. Um, I suppose even he, he came in, as I said, 2017, and there was a bit of readjustment. Um, you know, Limerick always played a, a traditionally kind of long ball. Like, you know, that was always our game, and it was a kind of an in-your-face type, type uh, approach. Um, but probably like and again, uh, I suppose I'll 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 kind of I have my own views on it that I, I think Limerick shouldn't deviate too much from that game as well because I you know I I think we play play very well under under those conditions. But the game they're playing now, as you know, is very much it's very very structured. It's very um, uh, I suppose very uh, uh, you know disciplined in their in their in their approach, but. It, it's just the, their degree of accuracy, like, you know, they're, they're stick passing, they're hand passing, they rarely turn the ball over, and um, they rarely get, get dispossessed, um, you know, they're, they're very, very, um, very accurate in everything they do, I suppose, the word of use, so like that, that's, that's a hallmark of his training, like, I suppose Paul himself comes from a football background that, you know, he would have played um, at, a, at a very high level uh, at, 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 at club and county, for Limerick, and I suppose that's that's his coaching background as well. So, like, he, so he's brought the principles of maybe football in terms of ball retention, in terms of attacking the ball at pace, using support players. Like, that's that's what Limerick have done maybe better than anyone else, and and they do it to such a, a high level all of the time that that's what makes them so difficult to break down. And other teams have tried it. I know even in Waterford, like they would have had pretty, you know, a not too dissimilar type game plan under under Derek McGrath, especially like, but but definitely. Um, his his coach. Now. I just think it's their levels of, of skill now are at such a high level. They you know they don't as I said they don't tend to turn over ball. They're, the other thing is like they're so confident in 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 that approach. Like, even when it's not working, you don't see them deviating away from it. Like you know they'll they'll still stick pretty rigidly to it. Like because you know they believe in the system or whatever. Like but the good thing that I, maybe I've seen it evolving a little bit um, maybe more this year is that. Definitely, there seems to be a lot more attacking from their half half uh, half backs. Like you know, Kyle Hayes, he probably has a license to get forward a lot more. Um, Timmer Burns definitely is coming forward a lot more as well. Like so, you know, they're they're so confident they'll they'll um, 
you know, they'll 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 back themselves. So yeah, look, I think I think his his approach speaks for itself. Like he's won an Ireland with Limerick, he's won an Ireland with Clare, and he's and he's uh, in an Ireland final on Sunday. Like you know, so you can't argue with that. And, and uh, uh, Ollie is a real legend of Limerick hurling yourself. Do you look um, on the team now with a bit of jealousy? Yeah, absolutely, Ryan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, look, it is like everything, and, and and I mean that in the best possible way. Because look, come here. I had thirteen years with Limerick. They weren't well. Certainly, they weren't all good years. A lot of a lot more bad years than good years. But I suppose, like, yeah, where you'd be enviable of them is their. Um, I suppose, look, the first thing to say about Limerick is that they really do have quality, like, no, no matter what kind of generation they play in, um, or, no, or no matter what style of hurling they play, I think, you know, these guys are the best hurlers Limerick have had in the last, uh, in the last maybe um, 40 or 50 years, like, you know what I mean? So, so from that point of view, I think, um, I think, yeah, of course, you're naturally... Uh, jealous, but like, look, from, uh, as a Limerick man now, it, it's great to see him doing so well. Sure, of course, you know, I love going to the matches. Please God, we get to go to the matches and, and support him. Like, but it's great to be a supporter of this Limerick team as well. Like, so, so, uh, so yeah, I, I, I won't mind one bit on Sunday evening if they're if they have an All Ireland medal in their back, another one in their back pocket, and yeah, you will, but but I won't. <laughs> and uh, Ali, I know you're under pressure for time, but uh, I'll just ask you. Well, we know who you think is going to win, but I'll just ask you why you think uh, Limerick might win on Sunday. Um, well, do you know what? Uh, as 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 you may already know, I've I've a long connection with what uh, I'm I'm I've been college in Waterford for years. Uh, I brought home a Waterford woman, like so. So to be fair, I have um, I have a fairly quiet house now at the moment, right? So nothing will give me more pleasure uh, than than to see and have great friends down in Waterford as well. And God knows I went to enough Waterford games when when Limerick were knocked out. So yeah, I'd love to see Waterford win. Um, but um, okay, yeah, I I do think they're they're going to be up against it. I I think it's going to be a big a big challenge. I think this is a really good Limerick team. Um, and uh, where do I see uh, where do I see him win it? I, look, I just feel maybe I think we're going to have have, have hopefully have, have a few points. To spare, I think Waterford are going to have to have everything go right for seventy-five minutes, and I think a lot of Limerick players. Like I, I think at the moment Limerick will get by with having four or five players not playing particularly well. But I think uh, I think Limerick need to have a real shutdown. Maybe nine or ten players have to have poor games, uh, and hope all the Waterford players have absolute stormers. They probably need to be even ten percent better than they were against Kilkenny to win that game. So you're laughing there, Les. I don't know, is it me or or? Uh, uh, I don't know, Ryan is or something else. A comical but, uh, <laughs> anyway, as I said, I wouldn't be grudge Waterford. I, I genuinely love to see water in the whole country. Have, see water. have a split household so up in Limerick this weekend, Dolly. We do, we do. We sure, yeah, absolutely not for the first time, but sure, we'll still be talking hopefully Saturday or Sunday night. Anyway, I'll, I'll wrap this up here now. Let's just do the last little bit. A huge thanks to Ollie for coming on the podcast today. Ali, I hope you understand we can't l- wish you luck on Sunday, but let's hope it's a cracker. We have more to come this week as we review the final with another very special guest and we give our own take on the match on food. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for all our future content and we'll see you soon on Extra Time.